Greetings, everyone. I am James Milan, and this is Talk of the Town. Um, today, I get to speak uh, with Scott O'Brien. Scott is a new member of uh, our high school community, has uh, just come in and taken the position of assistant director for high school counseling. And, you know, we talked a little bit before about how, you know, his title is, is uh, still to be ultimately determined, but the important thing is he is in charge of the counseling department in the high school. That's what we want to talk to Scott about. We always like to take opportunities like this to find out a little bit about uh, per somebody who's new to a position or new to the town. In this case, it's true uh, in both of those instances. So I want to start by just thanking you very much, Scott, for coming on into the studio. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it. It's not easy to get away from the high school, I don't think, <laughs> right? During nope. the school day, that's for sure. Very busy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I do, um, I warned you that I would ask, uh, you know, a little bit about you personally, um, but we do with these Talk of the Town interviews in which uh, again, somebody is new to a position in town. We do like to find out a little bit about, well, your journey, how you got here, et cetera. So if you wouldn't mind, just talk a about yourself a little bit. <laughs> sure. Um, so basically, I started um, working in mental health uh, as a clinician at UMass in Worcester. Um, I worked on a lock psych unit for about eight years. Um, wow. And all in the meantime, getting my master's degree in school counseling. Um, and I already had my teaching license. Um, I was certified history teacher um, first and uh, really found a fascination with psychology and helping adolescents through really tough times. So ultimately, after going to grad school at Assumption University, mm -hmm. um, I was able to work at a high school in Franklin, Mass for the past 13 years. Um, and from there, um, the school counseling position was fantastic. I loved the work I did. I worked with mostly 11th and 12th graders. Mm -hmm. um, and then ultimately a position as the head of guidance became available. Um, and I worked in that position for many years. Um, and the assistant director of high school counseling position in Arlington opened and I saw it as an opportunity for change and growth um, for my own um, personal um, trajectory, mm -hmm. and ultimately, uh, I am extremely happy to have this uh, opportunity um, to That's work in great. this awesome town. Well, um, I'm glad to hear you describe it as such. I wonder how much how much did you know about Arlington, if if anything, before this position came up? Sure, um, I've always. Uh, since my move to Boston, um, which originally was Fenway and then Brighton, and mm -hmm. I've always had this connection to this part of the, the state. Um, it, I love the area. I love the fact that there are so many people on bikes and walking and um, access to so many community resources mm -hmm. um, that it, it just was a, a lucky chance that this position in this town came available. Well, that's cool. Are you... Has it increased, decreased, or not changed much at all, your commute to, to move from working in Franklin to, to working here in Arlington? Well, um, now that I live in uh, southern Boston, um, it has increased quite a bit, mm -hmm. but it has increased my opportunity to listen to some good music, NPR, some, <laughs> some great podcasts, and, you know, it's a good processing time for me as well. That's great. Well, I hope that it continues to be that way because that, you know, oftentimes commuting is one of the harder parts of whatever job that we mm -hmm. have. So, um, all right, well, let's talk about um, the job itself. And, and I will just digress to say that we share, interestingly, quite a bit of history, I think, literally, because... Uh, people may know I was a high school teacher myself for a long time in a very small school in which I did a number of things, a number of things that you also do. And I also taught history. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that kind of nice little connection there, let's proceed to talk about uh, the work that you do. Because um, my understanding of uh, the counseling department and the counseling positions in a school as large as Arlington High School uh, is that it is a crazy job mm -hmm. in a lot of ways with a lot of different components to it. So if you can just kind of explain what it is, what is the work, your work, of course, but also the work of the counselors that you supervise within the counseling department. 
Yeah, um, one of the most positive experiences that I've had so far is seeing the guidance of Dr. Holman, uh, superintendent, um, and her mission to increase awareness and practices and um, resources for students um, throughout the entire district, um, no matter if they're the highest achieving student or most struggling student. It's empowering to work um, under leadership of people who are dedicated to making sure that we focus on social emotional learning, other people known as SEL, or uh, multi-tier systems of support, MTSS, um, and making sure that there are appropriate staffing and um, resources for our faculty and staff to have to empower our students, because that's the goal. In the end, the mission statement is about making sure that we empower all of our students um, to have growth and joy um, and to be able to become contributing members of society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think those those acronyms that you just mentioned, you know, the SEL, MTTS, or I don't know, I'm even sure I got that right. <clears throat> People may mm, gloss over such things because we're all, you know, we, we all get a little tired of hearing acronyms in a sense. But the goal, as you've described, you, as you have described it, is healthy students, mm -hmm. right? And having a good, worthwhile, um, constructive, productive experience when they're in school, and validating experience mm -hmm. when they're in school. Um, and so I know that that is a commitment that I, am, I have no doubt that you share along with everybody else who works in the, uh, the department you oversee now. Mm -hmm. um, but what are the challenge? you know, I mean, there are a bunch of challenges that I can think of, but you're the expert. <laughs> tell, tell us, what are, you know, what are you up against in a sense? Yeah, so um, the the department I work with, the seven school counselors um, and the many social workers um, at the high school are all such incredibly skilled people um, and talented at what they do and have been doing it, many of them for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes we need somebody to come in and look at the programming and decide if some things need to be tweaked, some things need to be updated. Um, and that's kind of my role is overseeing and making sure that we're running smoothly and we have the most up-to-date uh, information and, and resources for our students and families mm -hmm. um, and caregivers. So I can see that that's what you need to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I know what it means when you say people have been in, at the work for a long time because in a lot of ways, obviously on the positive side, that means they have tremendous amount of experience and have worked with a whole variety of students and situations, et cetera. On the other hand, right, we both know that, you know, I, me being, you know, in my 60s now also, I, looking back, realized that, you know, the last 10, 15 years of my teaching, I did a lot of the same thing over and over again, mm -hmm. and we all get used to that. Yep. So I, it sounds like it's part of the challenge of your particular position that you need to work with and support people who, you know, you may be suggesting changes and mm -hmm. they're not used to those. Yeah, and it's mostly working as a team, making sure that I'm there supporting everybody and getting receiving feedback as much as I'm giving it. So, mm -hmm. um, and in that manner, uh, we all learn a lot from each other. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little bit more. I mean, again, you just outlined, you know, what your own goals, uh, again, as the director of this department uh, are going forward and kind of what, what, mm, what your mission, you know, uh, is in that way. But tell us a little bit more, again, let's step back for a second, consider your own, you know, work in Franklin and, you know, again, the work of the counselors who you're working with. Um, I'm thinking, okay, you've got college admissions, which is always, uh, you know, one counselor, 200 plus students, et cetera. That sounds like a challenge to me. Uh, you have SEL in general, which is social emotional learning, as you said, and I know that that is, again, in our current world, uh, a particular uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have all of the detritus, unfortunately, like all of the effects and ramifications of the COVID years, which are still being worked through. Absolutely. Um, so those are things that strike me. Uh, I'd love for you to address any or all of those and any other things that you know that again just will give people a sense of okay if if they think about what is a college counselor uh sorry a high school counselor's job uh you know entail 
they'll, they'll have an answer. That way. So there's a lot of programming and um, there's a lot of roles that school counselors have that no one knows about. A lot of what we do is done in the background. Um, and actually, if we're doing our job the best, that's how it works. The students are supposed to be in school to be learning mm -hmm. um, and getting the material and curriculum from the teachers. For that to occur smoothly, you have to have a really great school counseling department to help run the programs that are required to help students in their post-secondary planning. It's required to have a good school counseling team to help the students who are having crisis or even small mental health concerns. Um, a lot of students come into the high school um, with having some, some major um, setbacks at home, um, if sometimes if they have a home. Mm -hmm. So we're the ones that are there to, to really take in the students that are not able to fully function in the classroom setting and assist them in receiving the appropriate um, supports. Um, and from there, it could be a counselor, could be a, as important as somebody whose job it is to triage and decide which step happens next for that student and who they see and what resources are necessary and which specialist they get referred to. Mm -hmm. um, all while meeting with that student who has the application into Harvard um, and needs assistance with uh, the essay or their SATs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, again, it's, it, it, it gives one a sense of the breadth of mm -hmm. the work that you do. Um, so if, if um, students are, well, l let me ask a couple of other questions of just about the kind of the composition of your department. I think you said that there were seven counselors? Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, and so do, uh, obviously the uh, high school counselors who are working around college admissions with students might work with some students in their uh, junior year and certainly mm -hmm. do in their senior year. Um, but I imagine that that's not, that that burden is not spread out over all seven. It's not like all seven have uh, juniors and seniors going to college that they're working with, or do they? Yes, um, every counselor has grade nine through 12, and it's all split up alphabetically. Oh, I see. Yep. Okay, so so basically you just take take the total number of students, go alphabetically in sevenths, and that's how you have your, your load. Yeah, and it's important for us to keep consistency and make sure that the counselor has the siblings of a student uh, who comes oh, through, okay. or making sure that the counselors have those students for four years is very important because mm -hmm. it's all a building process all throughout, and making sure that the counselors get to know the students really well. Even though they have large caseloads, they still get to know every single one of their students. Okay, the, that, that also clarifies something for me that I was wondering about because uh, you had mentioned before we went on air that the school's population is now up to 1,600 um, and that includes an influx of just 100 new, brand new students, transfers, new immigrants, et cetera. Um, and so I'm doing some quick math there, 1,600 to seven counselors, 20, 220, 230, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and but at least they're not trying to deal with 230 kids trying to get into college, mm -hmm. right? So that there's some proportion. One assumes Correct. that there's a rough, I, uh, a roughly equal balance among the classes, right? That they mm -hmm. have about as many ninth graders, tenth graders, Correct. et cetera. Uh, but still, that's a whole lot of things to keep track of. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if I can ask you personally to speak. Or, or ask you to speak personally um, to your experience in Franklin and then by extension or by proxy what people are also dealing with here in Arlington in terms of COVID, in terms of what you noticed um, in your work through those years and since the, that time. I mean, it, it's obviously had a major impact on just about everybody, which means that a student is impacted by a parent or a student is impacted by a parent's employment possibly. Um, a student's mental health has definitely on the spectrum has had some significant changes. Some students have gotten through it with great resiliency. Um, some students built resiliency during mm -hmm, COVID mm -hmm. um, and the pandemic. Um, so yeah, it, it, again, it's all different per student. And that's why we hold our jobs so individualized per student and how we get to know them so well and their backgrounds and their histories and their family histories. Um, and that's why it's so important to have smaller case lo caseloads, which the students, the counselors at Arlington High School have um, under the, the 
prescribed maximum caseload um, right? recommended by the Massachusetts Association of School Counselors or the American School Counselor Association. Mm -hmm. um, but as you just described, we just had 100 plus students transfer into the high school, bringing us over 1,600 students at this point. Um, so the, that growth, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Um, so we keep a very close eye on it and, and maintain those caseloads. Yeah, and I guess at some point you have to, uh, one assumes you'll have to think about expanding the department mm -hmm. if this continues in this way. Because as you said, even if they're under the maximum of what's advisable or allowed or whatever, it's still uh, with what we've just, with all the rest of what we're talking about, it's daunting. And and. Again, I go back to the leadership of Arlington School District, and those communications have already started. So the, there's a proactive level that we have already taken to make plans for that to occur. Um, once we hit this benchmark, this is the next step. Instead of waiting till the caseloads get too big or something major happens, we already have a plan for it. So that's the best part. Yeah, and a great um, a great illustration of what you were saying before about what makes you know makes it easier to do your job and just uh, better for everybody involved in terms of leadership when you have leadership that understands these things and that is proactive about uh, seeing where things are going and how to prepare for that exactly um, that's that's really um, very very good I am wondering now about how much of your time or the time of a counselor in the department um, is spent with families um, as opposed to students Great. Or yeah. not as opposed to, but in addition mm -hmm. to, obviously. Absolutely. Um, we try to make ourselves completely available for parents to come in and speak with us directly or over Zoom. Um, we have already had a senior parent night this year, which went wonderfully. We had a great turnout. Um, I applaud the parents who attended and those who didn't reached out and they were able to come to a virtual coffee hour the next day. Um, and, and I assume, sorry, I assume that that senior, that that parent night that you've had already, if it's happening in the first few mm -hmm. weeks of school, it's all about college. Mostly, yes. Yeah. It was it was listing basically, uh, letting parents know the resources that the counseling office had for them for the year, mm -hmm. getting ready for their child to have their last year in high school. Okay, right. So you're right. That that would involve other things as well. But I think obviously we know what the elephant in the room <laughs> is at, at almost all times. And something that we were actually talking about with a couple of colleagues of mine before we went on air is just that idea of what of where college fits into people's lives now. And obviously, Arlington prides itself, with good reason, on our school system. Mm -hmm. And um, it's pretty uniformly excellent from uh, elementary school right through to the end of high school. I think, again, it's another draw about this community for a lot of people, as you were just alluding to. The transfer students would, would kind of indicate that as well. Um, but, uh, you know, college isn't for everyone. Mm -hmm. Or college right away may not be for everyone. Mm -hmm. How do you... How do you communicate, finesse, how do you deal with with that in terms of the expectations, the collective expectations mm -hmm. around college versus the experience that you know that from the, the students that you've dealt with over, the, over time? Well, in Massachusetts, luckily, students have the ability to choose a high school, a public school option that they are allotted. And, mm -hmm. and the students who know at, at early ages that they can go into the trades or vocational um, programming that have the choice to go to Minuteman, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also adult programs afterwards. So if Arlington High School students decide to go into the trades as well, there are many programs that they can take there after high school as well. So those opportunities are, are there. Um, but in the developmental stages that the students are in in high school, they're still trying to figure that out. So a lot of our students tend to choose post-secondary plans as far as uh, four-year college goes. Mm -hmm. We do have some students who go into the military. We do have some students who decide to go into the trades. Um, and some students take a gap year. Um, and we're there and ready for any of those things. And it can come as late as the end of their senior year. And we're there to help them plan. But we are giving them those resources from day one at in ninth grade, um, helping them start to really dive in to figure out what they would like to do next. Because mm -hmm. high school is only four years. It sounds like a long time, but it's really not. Yeah, 
it's uh, something that, again, you get to my age and you've got a long way to go before <laughs> that. But uh, one of the things you realize as time goes by is that, you know, hours in a classroom mm -hmm. or something like that can go by very slowly. Days or weeks might, but decades, just <laughs> like that, right? So Correct. high school, as you said, it's going to be over before uh, folks know it. And uh, obviously that's something that you have to be aware of at all times in as, as a perspective that you're bringing to the conversations that you're having with students who don't yet recognize mm -hmm. that. Yep. Um, so an, another challenge or opportunity, I guess, for you to connect with these young people, which is mm -hmm. always a lot of fun. Um, hey, I've been, I have been quizzing you basically <laughs> a lot about your work. Um, let me ask you, you know, what is it that you, first of all, if you'd like to share any of your own vision or hopes or dreams, dreams, you know, d hopes or aspirations around your, this new position that you've taken, um, number one. And number two, is there anything that you want people to know, uh, either because there are upcoming events that people should know about, mm -hmm. anything, anything that you'd like to share with the audience? Sure. Uh, well, just off the top, uh, upcoming events next Thursday is financial aid night for senior so let's, parents. So let's put a date on that. That's October 5th, maybe? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, because never know when people are watching yep. what we're, what we're talking about. 630 here, in so. the auditorium at the high school. Okay, October 5th, 630 auditorium high school, and it is? Financial aid night. Okay, that's an important Yes, component. it is. My goodness. Very. Things have changed a bit this year with the FAFSA, so it's important that parents are, and guardians and caretakers are making sure they're paying attention to those changes. Yeah, that's really good to know, especially for parents who've already been through this process, mm -hmm. but if the process has changed, they need to know that especially. Absolutely. Um, we at the high school have been working very diligently to make sure that we're focused on every student. Um, making sure that every student has time with us, making sure that the counselors are getting into the classrooms. They had senior seminars all week, last week and the week before, um, teaching lessons, offering time to help students with the college choice, um, the application process, the essay writing components. Mm -hmm. um, and so that has gone really well. Um, and going forward, we're looking at making sure that all students have the resources they need and the comfort level that they they possess to come to the school counseling office. Mm -hmm. When the next phase of the school building is complete, we'll be moving into our new offices, which are much more central. Mm. Um, and we just want to make sure we're accessible to all students, even if it's for the smallest thing. We love seeing our students. Um, we love making sure that they have access to us for anything they need. Yeah, that's going to be, a, I think, a big essential uh, change there if you mm -hmm. guys are if right in the middle of things because as you know our, our high school is a sprawling <laughs> thing and uh, it's going to be a lot easier to navigate for most of the time that you're here than it has been for the last 15 years or mm -hmm. so uh, where it's been a true labyrinth and I think that that would have you know if if getting to one's counselor was hard literally just tough to, to do between classes or in your free period or something like that I'm sure that was a major disincentive. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that 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 this sounds like a, a really it's it's nice just that you'll have you know nice new offices et cetera, but also the location of them sounds very promising. Um, I have one last thing to ask you about, um, and that is we have spoken on various occasions with the director of social and emotional learning for the schools uh, there, and I'm just wondering about uh, SEL. Like, how is it that you work together with the SEL department, so to speak, in the high school? Yeah, um, my supervisor, Mogli Olander, is in, in charge of um, a lot of the components of SEL and uh, school counseling mm -hmm. for the entire district. Um, and we work hand in hand, and we're very simpatico when it comes to making sure that the programming is appropriate for all students and making sure that there's a nice flow from the elementary to the middle mm -hmm, to the mm -hmm. high school um, and that all services are available to all students that need it um, and making sure that parents are aware of that um, and community members um, so that we can make sure that our students are leaving after they complete all the way through 12th grade to be productive members of society. Well, you know, you mentioned this as one of the things that you, you know, when you were talking just about the job generally, uh, you know, 20 minutes ago or so near, 
the beginning of our chat, um, that that piece of simply trying to be available to every student wherever they are on the spectrum of financial need, um, mental health, uh, you, you, know, me, you know, where they are in, this, in the spectrum mental, of mental health, where they are developmentally, mm -hmm. et cetera. That all by itself is an astonishing, in some ways, aspiration, mm -hmm. right? Because you do have 1,600 people and there are many, many, many different positions mm -hmm. um, that, those, that those 1,600 kids would occupy along various spectrums, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't really, I'm not, I don't have a question to ask about that. I do want to recognize that is, you know, if you are doing that well, and you feel like you're on top, top of it enough, um, that is quite an accomplishment mm -hmm. um, all by itself. So kudos to you guys. <laughs> Thank you. It's a school-wide effort. So that's how you create a well-functioning department and school system. All right. Well, I want to thank you very much again for your, for your time. I'm, we genuinely appreciate it. And, uh, you know, as I said, good to get out of the school building sometimes. <laughs> uh, we're not far away. Hopefully we will see you again and be able to catch up as things start moving forward in your time here. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have been speaking with Scott O'Brien. He is, uh, well, well, we'll just say he directs the counseling department at the high school. Um, and um, he's a busy man. <laughs> we really appreciate his time. We appreciate yours as well. Thank you so much for being here. I'm James Milan. This is Talk of the Town. We'll see you next time.